here to tell you that Jesus Christ is real. Amen. That Jesus Christ is the only one who can save you. It says in the Bible, in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave us one begotten Son, so whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. And through Jesus, you also can have eternal life. There is no other name, there is no other person, there is no other God for whom you can have eternal life, only through Jesus Christ. And he says this word, This is life eternal, that they may know the one and true God, Jesus Christ, whom, you, whom thou hast sent. He says that you cannot come to the Father except through me. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth and the life. Therefore he says, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no father should come, no, no person should come to the Father except through me. If you reject Jesus, that is the biggest mistake you're going to make. Yes. You cannot go to heaven without Jesus. It doesn't matter how good of a person you are. Being a good person will not take you to heaven. It doesn't matter how how kind you are, how many times you pray, how much you fast. That's not going to take you to heaven. We pray and we fast, that is true, but we do that because we are so grateful for our salvation. We do that out of obedience to God, out of our love for God. But that is not what brings salvation. Salvation is found in Jesus Christ alone. Amen. And it says that he shall ever should believe in his heart, he shall ever should confess with his mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord shall be saved. And God, he does not send anyone to hell. That is the biggest misconception I've heard, that God is evil, that he sends people to hell. God does not send anyone to hell. When you live in your sin, when you reject God, when you, go, when you re reject repentance, that's when you send yourself to hell. God does not send you to hell. God does not want any man to perish. But when we turn away from God, we go to hell. Because hell is an eternal separation from God. Hallelujah. God is everything that is good. God is life. God is life. God is peace. God is freedom. But when we separate ourselves from God, we have none of these things. That's why when you go to hell, you have pain, you have misery, you have fear, you have darkness. Because these things are the opposite of God. Salvation is not found in any other name, in any other God but Jesus. Every other man, every other prophet or God or fake God that came before you, they are all dead. Every single other man who came before you to, to say that they're God, or to say that they know the way, they're all dead. Jesus Christ is the only one that's alive. Amen. He died for our sins. He was buried and he resurrected on the third day. And that is no accident. Some of you ask, how can God die? Well, is there anything God cannot do? Amen. Is God not omnipotent? Is there anything too hard for God? How can God die? He can do anything. He can, he can put himself in a fleshly body and he can decide to sacrifice that body. Is that too hard for him? It's not. It's not too hard for God. Nothing's too hard for God. And as it says in the Bible, there are things that are too hard for man. Some things are not possible for man, but nothing is impossible for God. So whatever it is you're going through, whatever it is that you've been through, if, if you think there is no more hope, if you think there is no more hope for you, if you're suicidal, if you're drinking, if you're depressed, if you don't see any point in life, let me tell you, there is a point in life. There is someone who can save you. There is something that can save you. And that is Jesus Christ. He can save you. He can set you free. And it's not just about the next life. It's about this life also. I see so many people who are depressed, so many people who don't have the world to live anymore. But let me tell you, once you accept Jesus, that will change. Once you accept Jesus, you'll be full of joy. You'll be full of life. You'll be full of peace. There are so many people I know myself, so many brothers and sisters in Christ who've been through horrible things, who've been, there, who've been suicidal, who've been depressed, but they're not set free. I myself, I used to be depressed, I used to be suicidal, but once I found Jesus, I was set free. I was set free and I had freedom, I had peace. 
And I had the love of God, which surpasses all understanding. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. And this is the greatest commandment of God. He says that as the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. We're meant to love each other. We're meant to love God. Just as we love ourselves, even more so. And loving God, it means to obey God. It means to repent of our sins. We cannot claim to love God and continue in our sins. We cannot claim that God loves us and we can continue to go in adultery, go in fornication. Now, if you commit these things and you're not repentant, you do not love God. You cannot say, I love God and go to church one day and then the next day you're in the club. The next day you're in some parade. No, you cannot love God. If you disobey God, our sin, it hurts God. When we sin, it hurts God because He has feelings also. He's not just a man in the sky with those feelings. God created us in His image. We have feelings. We feel angry. We feel disappointed. And that's what God feels also. And it says, in the end times, will be like the times of Noah. In the times of Noah, lawlessness abounded. Sin abounded. People disobeyed God. People did not love God. Everyone did what they wanted. There was adultery. There was fornication. There was sodomy. All these things. And God, He could not watch it anymore. He destroyed the world with fire. He destroyed the world with water. Sorry. He destroyed the world with water. But next time, He will destroy this world with fire. And the rainbow that we have, the rainbow that we have, that is God's promise to never destroy the earth again with a flood. Because that's what he did the first time. He flooded the earth because the sin was so great. He flooded the earth to start again because he was so angry at man for, for not obeying God, for continuing to go in their sin. That's how God flooded the earth. And he gave the rainbow as a symbol of his as a symbol that he would, as his, as his promise that he would never flood the earth again. Amen. And God is not a man that he should lie. But so many people, so many agendas, they've taken God's rainbow and they made it into something completely different. They made it about sex. They made it about sodomy. That is a mockery of God. That is a blasphemy of God. The rainbow is God's promise. The rainbow belongs to God. It does not belong to LGBT. It does not belong to these things. It does not belong to sin. It is God's rainbow. Amen. But as we know, the devil, he likes to take these things and use it himself. He likes to copy God. And that's what he's doing now. He's copying God. This God himself has said, he has said that he has sealed us. He'll seal his children with a seal on our foreheads. Amen. He has sealed us on our right hand. But that's what the devil is trying to do also. In the end times, the devil will force, force every single man on this earth, rich and poor, free and slave. He will force them to take a mark of the beast. If you do not take this mark, you will die. And this mark, it will be on your forehead or your right hand. Because the devil copies God. In fact, let me read to you what will happen. It was created to see your obedience. It was created to see how you conform to 
this government, how you will conform to your lives. And every time you conform to these things, you're essentially bowing to the devil. You're essentially bowing to the enemy. Do not, do not be deceived, my friends. Preach it, sir. Amen. And it says in John 8, 24, I said therefore unto you, that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am me, you shall die in your sins. Mm. If you do not believe in Jesus, you will die in your sins. If you do not believe in Jesus, there is no salvation for you. There is eternal separation from God for you. If you do not believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh to save us from our sins, that is the mindset of the Antichrist. Anyone that doesn't believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is the Antichrist. They've got the spirit of the Antichrist. And it says, in the same chapter, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that does not believe is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Hmm. That's right. If you did not believe in Jesus, you are already condemned. It doesn't matter if you're a good person, it doesn't matter if your good deeds outweigh the bad. If you do not know Jesus, you are already condemned to eternal hellfire. But if you believe in Jesus, it doesn't matter how good you are. It's not about being good. Our good deeds, they're a dirty right to God. It's about obedience to God. It's about your faith in God. That's why it says that Abraham's faith was accounted to him as righteousness. Our faith is what makes us righteous before God. Because none of us can be righteous on our own accord. None of us can be righteous as our own human beings. Our righteousness is for our faith in God. Because there is no good man, no, not one, only God is good. And he says, God says in his word, that there is therefore now no more condemnation to them that in Christ Jesus. Doesn't matter what life you're living now, doesn't matter what life you've lived, what you've been through. Doesn't matter how many people have condemned you, abused you, doesn't matter what you've been through. When you accept Jesus Christ, there is now no more condemnation for you. Because Christ, he took that condemnation upon his shoulders. He took it all upon himself when he died for us on the cross. That's right, my friend. He took your shame. He took your sin. He took your pain. He took every one of your sicknesses and iniquities and he carried it on himself. He was a sacrifice for our sins. And he did not have to die for us. God could have just let us perish. God could have just let us die in our sins. But no, he gave his one begotten son for us so that we can be free. So, so we can have eternal life. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No man comes upon the Father except through me. You cannot come to God through any other name. You cannot come to God through Buddha. You cannot come to God through Muhammad. You can only come to God through Jesus. There is no other name through which man can be saved. It's only through the name of Jesus Christ. And God says in this world, in this, in this word, that when we believe in Jesus, when we follow Jesus, we're not going to be loved, we're going to be hated. Because mm. he says that as man has hated me, they'll hate you also for my name's sake. So you can see the disciples of Jesus, they did not live a rich, comfortable life. They did not have mm. a happy ever after. Every single one of Jesus' disciples was murdered for their faith. Every single one of Jesus' disciples, they were thrown in hot oil. They were speared to death. They were crucified. They were killed. And that is how far we're willing to go. We will not renounce our faith. When you have Jesus, you do everything for him because he loved us so much. He gave everything for us. He gave his life for us. And we, those that follow God, we're willing to give our life for Jesus. Amen. And that's what's going to happen in the end times. 
After three and a half years of the tribulation, the enemy will overcome the saints of God and they will kill us. They will behead us. But we are willing to pay that price because Christ paid that price for us. Christ died on the cross for us. He died for us. Preachers, you say. Amen. But many have received him. To them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. When you accept Christ, when you accept Christ in your in, in your heart, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you speak his word, you become the sons of God. You become the children of God. Because every man on this earth, they're a creation of God. But it doesn't mean that you're a child of God. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you are not a child of God. Yes. You are a creation of God. My God. But you can only be a child of God when you accept Jesus. Preach it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank when you. When you're willing to live for Him. Help her, Holy Spirit. And He says. Holy Spirit, help her. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And we are not talking about physical death. Every single one of us will die a physical death. Those of us that have Jesus, those of us that have accepted him as our savior, we will only die once. We will die a physical death. And we will live an eternal life with Jesus Christ as savior. Amen. But those that reject Jesus, those that reject Christ, you will die twice. You will die in this world. And then you will face God on the judgment. And if you haven't accepted him, he will say to you, Depart from me, I never knew you. And you'll be cast into hellfire. That is the second death. When you're cast into hell, when you're cast into the lake of fire, that's the second death. And there is no more chances for you. There is no more salvation for you. Once you're dead, one second after you die, it's too late. Hi, Maddie. It's too late for you. But you still have a chance now, my friends. You still have a chance while you're alive. Come to Jesus Christ. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life. Amen. This will not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Amen. When you accept Jesus, he no longer calls you servant. You are not just his child. You are God's friend. That's why Jesus said in John 15, verse 14, you are my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you, God no longer calls you his servant. He doesn't just call you his child. He calls you his friend. When you follow God, when you obey God, when you go after his commandments, you become a friend of God. And trust me, you did not want to be on the wrong side of God. You did not want to be an enemy of God. Just read the Old Testament and you will see what happened to the enemies of God. You did not want to go on the wrong side of God. You want to be God's friend. My Lord and my God. Jesus says that whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I will do it. And that's what will happen. Whatever you ask of God, He will do it for you in Jesus' name. Come to me. Because God loves you so much. Come to Jesus. Amen. Come to Jesus, my friends, before yes. it's too late. Mm. Come to salvation. Yes. Do not reject God. Yes. And it says in John chapter 20. Yes. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he shewed unto them his hand and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Amen. When Jesus died on the cross, he resurrected again. He came back to life. Amen. He came to his disciples. Amen. 
And he was alive. He wasn't dead. He was alive. Jesus Christ is alive today. He never died. And he will never die. Amen. And he said, I am the vine. And you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same can bring forth much fruit. Amen. And without me, you can do nothing. Amen. So you see, my friends, through God, nothing is impossible. When you have God, you can do all things. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Amen. When you don't have God, you have no fruit. When you have no God, there is nothing that you can do. And every work of your hands, it is vanity. Amen. There is no fruit to these things. Amen. And as it says in God's word, that you shall know a tree by its fruit. Mm. Because a good, tree, a good tree cannot bring forth bad fruit. Amen. And a bad tree cannot bring forth good fruit. Just look at the life of Jesus. Repent. His life yes. has brought has brought forth so much good fruit. Yes. He has never killed anyone. Mm. He has never harmed anyone. He has loved all people. He has been peace with all people. Repent. And look at some of the other prophets of some other religions. They were murderers, pedophiles, and rapists. Mm. So you tell to me, which one of these is the real prophet? Which one of these is the truth? Is it Jesus? Or is it someone else? Jesus is the only way, my friends. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And you should know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Amen. Five minutes. It will set you free. Amen. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the truth.